This is the Walter Farm, by far the hardest hit of the four properties that were affected by this tornado. There are vehicles all over their property. Here's a four-wheeler that was tossed like it was nothing. And this is the small stuff. Don't tell the Walter family. It was just an EF-1 tornado. Even a mile and a half away, this thing just sounded like a train. From his nearby farm, Bob Walter watched the tornado bear down on his mother's home and the farm he grew up on. And I, I just saw all this disappear in about a matter of about 10 seconds. I could see, you know, buildings just, you know, going, you know, a half mile up in the air. Bob got there quickly. He saw every corner of the family property was hit. Four concrete silos gone, two more damaged, along with several outbuildings. The tornado picked up large trucks, small trucks, a grain cart, a tractor. Then there was the combine. We're talking probably a you know, 40,000 pound combine that picked it up and moved it 200 yards. But Bob's first concern was the house. He knew his mother and four of his five children were among the nine people taking shelter in the basement. I was like, oh, it's not gonna like come hit me. And yeah, it did. It just didn't look real. Didn't look real at all, it looked fake. Oldest son, Tom Walter, watched the twister come toward him for several minutes, then shot this incredible video as it bore down on the family farm just before he ran downstairs. I was standing there and I thought, well, that'll just go around us, but it sucks, you know, just to walk out the door and see everything you worked for gone. Dozens of family and friends showed up to help. The big stuff was easy to find. The fields are hiding a lot more. Again, thankfully, no one injured, not even livestock. Just a few weeks ago, there were 600 head of cattle in this feedlot here at the Walter Farm. They've since been moved, thankfully. In Adams County, Mark Tauschek, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. You can't see it in this video here of our KCCI crew's confrontation with the suspect, Chad Bryant, because before we could even get out our camera, he pulled out what looks like a rifle and pointed it at us. But he didn't stop there. 27-year-old Chad Bryant was visibly upset Thursday afternoon, threatening our KCCI crew as we tried to get video of his Legrand home. Can you take that off my face, please? Well, no, whoa, 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 no, you don't touch my camera. Well, I don't want you on my face. No, you don't, you don't touch my camera. Bryant continued covering our camera lens and then poured water over photojournalist Bob okay, Thomas's hey, head. Hey, hey, call the sheriff's department. He just assaulted me. Minutes later, two suspects who were arrested earlier this week on drug charges fled the scene in a white sedan. Bryant walked back inside the front door of his home here, and within about five minutes, we saw him take off on foot heading south behind these homes. And that's what started the manhunt. Cameron may have picked him, uh, came around and picked him up. With guns drawn, Marshall County Sheriff's deputies, along with Marshalltown police, surrounded the neighborhood, using our KCCI SUV as a shield, while dozens of neighbors watched it all unfold. This is nuts. This is a quiet neighborhood. There's a lot of children that live here, a lot of children that live here. This is very scary for all of us. The manhunt put nearby East Marshall High School on lockdown for several hours. Officials made entry into Bryant's home, finding no one inside. Brian is now facing additional assault charges because of how he reacted to us this afternoon. Kim St. Ange, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. Monday's river became Tuesday's lake. Every display in Jolly Holiday Lights now surrounded. Unfortunately, it uh, went a lot higher than we thought it was going to get. Damage to the exhibit that draws tens of thousands each year will be determined after the water recedes. Some already obvious. We're going inside the Santa's Wish Shop. Check out the uh, damage or hopefully lack of. Oh my. This here is Santa's chair that Santa sits in. Many items were put on tables. These are the controllers that, that run all the displays. Up off the ground uh, thinking that Santa's Wish Shop here would not gain any water and then unfortunately it did. And all of our Christmas trees here all have wooden bases down below those, uh, so those are all are going to need to be replaced. This is Santa's suit, and it's been underwater for a while. 
Outside Santa's wish shop, a giant generator donated by 3E Electric sitting on a trailer. Workers couldn't move it before the water arrived because the pickup truck kept getting stuck in the mud. Not good. With a Make-A-Wish fundraiser shut down three weeks early, the effort to help the nonprofit make up a $200,000 loss has exploded one way under the social media hashtag bring the jolly share pictures or videos online demonstrating how you bring the jolly this holiday a lot of water apparently not dampening the giving spirit and to all a good night You can put more stuff on them, Kathy. You don't have to be quite so frugal. When it comes to food prep, Lisa Vetterlein could put a lunch lady to shame. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for tonight. The first step in what has become a weekly ritual. We just go around and say, hey, have you had dinner tonight? He's going to be going down to the homeless camp. Oh, you want him to have all the water? Yeah, right? I want him okay. to have the water so he can do that. Lisa's one of about a dozen bicyclists you meet every Thursday night at the Price Chopper on Ingersoll. Fairly simple recipe, burrito. Loaded down with offerings. Homemade oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Even bug spray. Last week they actually had the biggest smiles on their faces when we started handing them out. Joe Laszlo started what he calls the Urban Bike Food Ministry in March with a simple task. Just go up to them and ask them that question is, have you had supper tonight? Here we go. One group heads to the homeless camps, another to the Oak Ridge neighborhood. You guys had supper tonight? I have some food to offer if you'd like. We have um, sandwiches and burritos and cookies. There's no shortage of willing recipients. Some are more excited about the food than anyone their age should have to be in 2015. There you go. How about a water? It's beautiful to see such a simple gesture so graciously received. It just feels good to be able to provide something that somebody else needs, you know, that's all. It's only about seven or eight miles, but it's the best bike ride that I go on during the week. Mean, tough men, some serving life sentences. When I first came in, I was, I was kind of a pretty uh, angry young guy. Have gone soft. I see some of the biggest, hardest convicts go into a mother hen row. Inmates spend about a year training their seeing eye puppies. We go every place together. If I, if I go, she's got to go. From tiny fur balls to serving as someone else's eyes. It's not always easy, but the reward is worth it. Finest Atwood even trains his dogs to get along with cats. Kaylee, be good. It's just a camera. <laughs> Most of the time, students listen. Sometimes they rebel. <laughs> Kayla is only seven months old, but she knows so many commands. This one's my favorite. Kayla, hug. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Warden Jim McKinney says the guys learn life lessons. I want them to feel that loss and to realize that they've taken things from people, they've taken property, they've hurt people, or they might have taken a life. And when that dog goes, they change into little soft little young ladies. You know, they, they, they start crying. No, I shouldn't say they're ladies. I shouldn't say that. The teacher learning from the student. Before we were like a burden on society, and now we want to be a provider to society. Hopping off a bus is no big deal to 5th and 6th graders. But for kindergartners, it's bigger than their backpacks. Which is why Thomas's siblings sat him down before the first day. I said that uh, it's fine stuff and you get naps. You get naps. So. Okay, all right, hug and kiss bye. And I gotta go, okay? Hug kiss. You'll love me this morning. See ya. If only they could have done the same with mom. This is hard. I'm actually keeping it all in my emotions right now. I'll probably go outside and cry. <laughs> Since 2009 or 10, you want to say bye to mom? These boys and girls have usually been with mom or dad. Love you. I'm so glad we got you as this teacher. Oh, thank you. Or grandma. I think we are all happy that he's at this stage of his life and sad in a way because mm -hmm. it's going to be a very big change for all of us. But today, how's it going? Today is different. Let's go find our cubbies. Most of the kids, ready. they were just fine. Excitement. He said he had a little bit of a butterfly in his tummy this morning, but then he got on the school bus and he did it, and then I drove here to make sure he was okay. He doesn't need me. Most of the parents, I have butterflies that I'm excited for him. Realized today, their babies aren't babies anymore. You want to see my gym shoes? Because two minutes after the last kisses and snapshots, they were cutting and coloring like pros. A few tried their best to hold it in until they remembered the one who just 
kiss them goodbye. Oh, not yet. Okay. Okay. Then meet her. The last tear fell before 8.30, which was time for P.E. And the time these kids proved they follow directions well. Can you put your hands by your side? Beautiful. I love that. Ten years from now, moms and dads will be cheering them on from these stands. But today, both Ben's, Ella and Isabella, got their pedometers, walked back to their carpet. U. S. Tea. And started soaking it all in. And you're going to learn all these things in kindergarten. It's going to be a happy day. Eric Hansen, KCCI 8 News. Ella, nice job. Good job, Ben. Iowa's news leader. In the land of crayons. I like saying that. Some kids think they're Picassos. Others are wannabe Hemingways. I see the duck. Then there's the six-year-old who really is a music prodigy. Eat. Drunk ditch. Let's go. His secret came out the first day of kindergarten when he walked into chapel with the whole student body. Oh, he just walked up. Student me, come up to the front of me. Which is about the same time. Okay. Oh. Something else came out. Oh, uh, my teeth? J. Mark Shabazz's classmates at Joshua Christian Academy said the pledge. And J. Mark said, Let's rock. Remember, it's a gift. He's a kindergartner. This cannot be tough. <laughs> this is talent. This started when he was in diapers. If it made noise, he would just beat on it. And then we brought him a drum set, broke it, brought him another drum set, broke it, and then it continued. <laughs> now that he's six, he doesn't just play drums every day for chapel. Oh, no. If my he also really conducts his school choir. The toothless wonder doesn't just wave his hands at the seventh graders. No, he's, he's learned how to communicate with a choir non-verbally to make them sing what he wants them to sing. He really directs them, injecting spirit into the music. They woke up. It, it was almost as if um, we were singing the same songs, but just in a new way. Just like he does with the adult church choir at Mount Hebron Baptist every week. It's like they expect it from him to get up there and direct every Sunday. The first time you see a six-year-old drop in the beat, you want to laugh. Don't you dare. Nope. Because his teachers are convinced if he can already do this, just wait till he can reach all the symbols. God's got something big <laughs> for him. Okay, you got it. All it takes Good morning. is 15 minutes. Welcome to the fair this morning. Spin the dial, pick a time and scatter, Woo! and you'll prove a quarter hour can be cashed in at the fair in so many ways. We're at $8. We'll give you all the pancakes you want. Straight up nine at the beef quarters? It is breakfast time, yes it is. Buys a tall stack for five bucks. Delicious. Best bargain at the fair this yeah. morning. Yeah. Making the down the block wait worth it. A pancake breakfast. Look at me, fat guys like to eat. Across the street. Time to wash bakes, I guess. 902's time for a pork rub. Because in FFA, to walk away with blue, there can't be a speck of poo. It is which wasn't a problem. Are we ready with the first group? Where are you guys from? Seconds later at Bill Riley's stage, where kids sharing both birthdays and last names L-I-N-D-G-R-E-N took over in pairs and threes. We have William and Malcolm Dix, and we're from Mount Vernon, Iowa. By 9.05, the judges, also twins, were already deliberating. This is who I thought first. Deb over in the ag building. There's the butter cow. Her first stop of the day was no debate. I mean, we can't come to the fair unless we see the butter cow. Every 15 minutes, in every corner of the ground, traditions endure. You had time to Breakfast becomes hope. Our church volunteers and the money goes to missions. And a year's worth of work. Nice job, young lady. Yes. Makes a fair day a winner. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's 9.13. And as soon as one class ends, another begins. She's not quite as heavy as structured as the guilt we've got in place. Another family <laughs> joins the line. Thank you. Hi there. And another winner or two.
earns Thank a blue. You. Look at you won. <laughs> All in 15 minutes. We're planning to go to the concert tonight. All at Iowa's State Fair. Enjoy. We'll be down here until it closes tonight. To a kid in flip-flops, waiting even a minute for the pool to open feels like a hundred years. Because it's very, very hot. They all want to get in quick without getting busted for running. But in Osceola, lifeguards have never blown their whistle on Fern. The gal who doesn't need a bathing suit. I told you I'm a hundred years old. I don't have to do that. <laughs> to be the most popular woman at the pool. It's wonderful to see all of you again. Do you remember Nancy? And I'm so glad you're swimming. Everyone knows Fern. Because this weekly swim party? Yeah, because you can see your friends here. Is thrown by the 100-year-old near the shallow end. It's good to see you and I'm so glad you're swimming. A couple decades ago, in her 80s, Fern was talking with kids from Osceola's trailer court. They revealed what their home life was. And in some cases, it was very sad. Some weren't eating. Plenty more were struggling in school. Wouldn't it be wonderful if? Which is when Fern went to work. I'm here for a reason, and I better fulfill it. She started co-writing books with third graders and making little friends citywide. She gave each kid a pencil that says Fern is my friend because she heard some kids say that they didn't have friends. I'm so proud because she helped my son in school. And then she hatched the idea that packs the pool all summer long. If they want to swim, they should swim. Regardless of how much their parents make. Very early on, these little kids find out whether they're in the haves or the have-nots. Every Monday on Fern Underwood Free Swim Night, Osceola's kids are all in the haves. How are you doing? Do you remember me? Well, remember you. Good oh, heavens, how could I forget? Because they all have a friend. It's so good to see all Thanks of for you. The free pool. Who made this possible. Thanks for the free pool. She's super cool and super nice. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say I didn't tear up. The magic here isn't in the water. Does it make you feel young uh, to be around the kids? <laughs> it's the hundred-year-old sitting a few feet from the water, listening. The lady I was just talking to with no, two little I'm kids makes seven dollars an hour. While we're doing this, doing this, so every kid can be a kid. We don't, we don't do enough. So you and I aren't through yet. No, that's right. <laughs> In a state with six times more pigs than people, it was bound to happen. These two ladies stopped in and they had this pig that uh, fell out of a truck. A semi on the four lane south of Fort Dodge. I think you'd be surprised. Veterinarian Jim yeah. Illig figures she was no more than 15 pounds when the folks following behind that big rig brought her in last fall. The distance between the boards and the truck are, are too much. It can happen. We didn't really expect her to make it being she fell off a semi going top speed. The piglet was hurting. She had road rash head to toe. Um, her front foot was split in half. So when the vet called Kim Fievold, who admits she's so crazy about animals. I'm kind of the weird duck anyway. She refers to herself as one. She couldn't say no. <laughs> that day, her rescue horses, donkeys, and dogs got a sister. You know, this little pig needed help, and if I didn't take her, someone would eat her. To save her from a date with a fork. There was a lot of people that wanted her to eat her, you know, because it's a free pig. Nine months later, Highway, that's her name, is 300 pounds of personality. <laughs> Most of the day, the free-range porker patrols the farm with her buddy Bane. But when her appetite flares, stand back. She's a bit of a diva pig. Because at mealtime, she won't touch pig food. Keep in mind, we tell her that she's a dog. Her honest-to-goodness favorite? Bacon strips. <laughs> Let that sink in. She is eating bacon, but it's she's a dog. Remember, she's she thinks she's a dog. A 300-pound eating machine who's so convinced she's a pup. Here, okay, come on. Let's see. 
she joins the rest of the dogs on their walks. She's a funny pig. Highway earned her name slipping out that crack in the unluckiest of falls. Yeah, she, well, really though, but it was probably the luckiest. Because the rest of the truckload's been at the butcher shop for months. Roll over. <laughs> While she's enjoying the perfect pork rub. No balls and two strikes. Harlan and Dubuque Wallert played a state tournament game this afternoon. Sunny and Saturday's poke wind uh, blowing out toward left field. But it was missing a big piece of the tournament experience. We were a little disappointed, but they could still end up playing up there. For the first time in the 11 years, the state baseball tournament has been played in Des Moines. Not all the games were at Principal Park. It was really a hard decision. You know, we want students to have the state experience at Principal Park. Rain wrecked the schedule, so last night state high school officials tried to figure out if they could fit six games and a seventh that had been suspended into one day. And in our rough numbers, it was going to take us somewhere between 16 and 18 hours to do that. The two Class 3A games were moved to Southeast Polk that has an artificial turf field, a new experience for almost all the players. Your feet get caught if you don't pick them up, so I know a couple times I was walking, I stuck my toe down, I was like, ooh. The change of venue had one unfortunate consequence before the first game. The first baseman for Dallas Center Grimes broke his leg sliding into a base. The head coach had sent his whole team out to practice sliding to get used to this new surface. We were just going to practice a couple slides and, and now, you know, nobody feels worse about it than I do. Dallas Center Grimes and Dubuque Wallets Road to Principal Park stopped at Southeast Polk. Pella and Harlan finally got there. You know, you always want to get out there and play and it kind of stinks if you don't get to, but we'll take this. I guess we qualified for state twice, right? You gotta be bold to streak through a state park in broad daylight. The guy attached to these bare legs, I'm a streaker and proud of it, has had plenty of practice. Before you blush, John Leopa is not that kind of streaker. His streak is even more jaw-dropping. In the mid-70s, he started running a mile every day, unless a party got in the way. After a, a very uh, enjoyable New Year's Eve party on January 1st of 1977, uh, that was the last day I missed a run. 77, that's when his current streak started. He was 31. I think I just woke up the next day and, and said, I need my run. Just like he did the day his kids were born, and when they graduated, and every day since, whatever happened. You've got to have a little bit of grit, uh, you know, and perseverance uh, to keep this thing going. Even when he probably shouldn't have. But I actually ran, you know, my uh, mile on the fifth floor of a hospital room with permission of the staff. And <laughs> so. Two years ago, his streak almost ended. Internal bleeding will do that, unless you're John in a gown on a floor that loops. I put my Nikes on and, uh, and I counted exactly how many steps it was. There, was hardly, there were hardly any patients on the floor and, uh, and they all got a chuckle out of it and I got my mile out. Add up all the 40 below mornings and 110 degree afternoons and this Saturday will be the 14,000th consecutive day John's run at least a mile. 38 and a half years. Only 13 Americans have a longer streak going. It's not an obsession if it's healthy and if it makes you feel good. He's run into a deer in the fog here at Lake Aquabi and been chased by a Minnesota bear. And I turned around and probably ran the fastest mile I've ever ran in my life. But he's always come back, even though miles are slower since Carter left office. I'm not the bionic man, but uh, you know I, I feel good for having just turned 70 making Iowa's fully clothed streaker determined to keep going. I've got to work it in somehow. For patients, one night in the ICU is one night too many. This is the worst time of their lives. The guy in room five only knows he's somewhere in the triple digits. It's a genetic disease that I possess. Sean Norman is 28. He was a kid when doctors first said Noonan syndrome. It can make you tired, it can make you weak. It can, it can make you face death. It's all heart related. It's very complicated. It's not very well known. Other than you spend a lot of time 
dreaming what you do when you get out of the ICU. <sighs> Sean's mom couldn't single-handedly grant his first wish, electing Donald Trump. But a couple paramedics helped her with another, busting him out right past the whiteboard where his big goal still read, get out of here to see Star Wars. That's kind of been a goal of his. Every time he starts feeling down or whatever, we point at the board and go, hey, we got to get out. We got a couple more days. We're getting close. Saturday morning, just after sunrise. I'll see you up there, okay? Sean got a chauffeured ambulance ride to Ankeny's Springwood 9, where they'd reserved one entire theater for the guy who was living, it seemed, to see this movie. Star Wars was his anchor, his drive. It's got to get to see Star Wars. Tell me when. Yeah? Okay. With his bed adjusted in the aisle and 26 loved ones surrounding him, I'm thankful. The curtain rose and the coming attractions started, which hurt. It does. It does. Because Sean had made it clear this movie would be his last. So that's what we're doing. That's his wish, is to go home. He's tired of being poked and prodded and he just wants to go home. By the time his face flickered with the return of his favorite character, I like Han. The hospice nurse by his side had already officially taken over. That's why you're doing. They were telling themselves, this is what he wants. It's tough, but I have to fulfill his wish. I have to. For two hours and 16 minutes, the guy who's already decided to donate his body to science soaked in every frame. We're making memories, and not everybody gets to do that. Once the lights came up, the guy on the stretcher was so exhausted, he mustered only a two-word review. Not bad. And a few final hugs. Okay, should we get you home? Okay. All right, let's get you home. Where the guy who's only 28 wants his story to end. It's his call. Sean got two visitors over the weekend, Darth Vader and a stormtrooper from the 501st Legion, who drew one more big smile. Tonight, hospice is helping him rest comfortably at home. Eric Hansen, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. It's a tradition even George Washington wouldn't miss. It all starts here in Iowa. As American as apple pie on a stick. There'll be a handful of Democrats who will come as well. Hillary probably is not going to come. She'll email in her appearances. <laughs> Presidential hopefuls climbing up on the soapbox at the Iowa State Fair. I am unbought and I am unbossed. I do not, you know, I will listen to everyone. We have so now concentrated wealth and power in the hands of so few that it is literally taking opportunity out of the homes and the wallets and the neighborhoods of the many. On day one, three candidates hit the ground running, getting their ground game on, cooking chops over a hot grill and shaking hands with every fair goer, a possible caucus voter. I feel like I know them as personally after meeting them here at the fair. If they're going to move on in the process, they have to answer the questions that they get in Iowa. Mike Huckabee, first out of the gate here, knows the importance of pressing the flesh at the fair. He won the Iowa caucuses in 2008. Most candidates hide behind the walls of a nice cocktail party in Georgetown. And they don't rub shoulders with people who are standing out here sweating through the state fair. As candidates walk through crowds fielding questions between corn dogs and Ferris wheels, this is where Iowans separate the wheat from the chaff. As grassroots as it gets, you know, you need to shake every hand, you need to go to every vendor and every booth and say hello. Uh, you know, Iowans, they value authenticity. The folksy face to face exchanges have become part of the fair entertainment, but through all the silliness, Iowans take this seriously. Being an informed citizen is the most important duty of an American. I mean, how do we keep democracy strong? We participate in it. Jeb Bush seemed right at home flipping chops over a hot grill, saying when you're from Miami, you can take the heat. He ate the pork on a stick and told me he broke his diet with a fried Snickers bar. I'm cheating, completely. <laughs> it's the only way to be on a diet is to cheat. The only way to get votes is to shake hands. Bush moved from picnic tables to park benches, answering questions and posing with every person who approached him. Jeff, can I get a quick photo with you? Yeah, hang on. From the pork tent, he moved to the bud tent, where he enjoyed a cold one. Refreshed, he was ready for the midway to throw his best fastball. Oh! There's the winner. 
I'm out of here. Hey, hold on. 47 miles per hour. Winner, winner, winner. Oh, yeah. He hopes to be a winner of the Thank Iowa caucuses and climbed up on the Des Moines Register soapbox here. to tell fairgoers why they the should vote for him. So I campaign the way that I would govern, out amongst everybody, no rope lines, totally out in the open. But was he convincing? I like what he had to say, and uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty well convinced I think I'd vote for him. I'm, yeah, no favorites yet. I want to hear what they all have to say. We're actually Carly Fiorina supporters, but we can live with Jeb Bush, and if he's the guy, we're in. How would you describe your day at the fair? Fantastic. Had a blast. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Didn't eat as much as I thought I was going to, which is the one disappointment, but uh, met a lot of great people and have enjoyed it a lot. I will. I will. We'll see you next time. Yes, we will. <laughs> when Donald Trump first arrived at the fair, he told me he wanted to eat something on a stick, but nothing fried. So I told him to come here for one of these. The crowd chanted as Trump chomped on his pork chop on a stick. He had worked up a sweat and an appetite. Everybody's got to step back. Trying to cross the fairgrounds through a chaotic crowd. Mr. Trump, have you ever been to the Iowa State Fair before? I have, 10 years ago. Ten years I loved ago. it, but I love the people even more. I love the people. And a lot of the people here. <laughs> Keep it up, Don! Keep it up! You're the man! You're the man! Seem to love him back. Because he tells it like it is. The billionaire businessman won a few dozen young fans by taking them for rides in the $7 million helicopter he landed in near the fairgrounds. It was awesome. We just went up and we went around the fairgrounds and got a good tour of that and then came back around and landed. Yeah, I saw the Ferris wheel. Yeah. And what did you think of Mr. Trump? Mm, he's nice. If you could vote, would he have your vote for doing this? Definitely, yeah. Trump also spent 20 minutes answering questions. Nobody else will do the job that I will do. I will bring back jobs. I will strengthen our military. I'll take care of our vets. I'll get rid of Obamacare, which is, by the way, a catastrophe. Look at what's happening with your... No, look what's happening. We're going to take jobs back from China, Japan. We're going to make our country great again. And that, to me, is going to be the challenge. The presidential hopeful hopes to release more details on his policies in the next two weeks. I have been covering candidates out here at the Iowa State Fair for 20 years, and I have to say the crowd walking with Donald Trump today was one of the biggest I have ever seen. Todd and Laura. While the candidates are speaking on stage, ever wonder what goes on backstage? We seldom get access behind these curtains, but today we did. No wizard behind the curtains, just candidates concentrating. I just try not to fall off the stage. Some having too much fun. <laughs> we found Bobby Jindal joking, Lindsey Graham laughing, each waiting their turn one at a time. One of the things I love to do is to sort of get a flavor, the feel of the audience, uh, what the mood is. Uh, here's some of the other speakers and see if they're stealing my really, really great lines. A pensive Ted Cruz paced, paused, and appeared to pray before taking the stage. This has been such an incredible whirlwind. You know, people ask, is it tiring to run for president? I have to tell you just the opposite. It, it, it is invigorating. Carly Fiorina also got in the zone. Jeb Bush gathered his thoughts to touch on topics of concern to Iowans. The debt, the deficit, the divide, the um, just the, the inability for anything to get done in Washington, D.C. They're concerned about the fact that wages haven't grown in 40 years, that not enough people are at work. They're concerned that the government is out of control, and they're also concerned that the world's a dangerous place when we're not leading. Although these White House hopefuls have given these speeches so many times, backstage you can see they don't take their time on stage lightly, realizing this could catapult them to the big stage of the U.S. presidency. Going up on stage, it's, I just remind myself what an incredible honor it is to be able to aspire to the highest office in the land and how far removed that is from the life my parents lived not that long ago. So it's a, it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding and hopefully it works out. Cynthia Fodor, KCCIA News, Iowa's News Leader. We should take the best ideas that exist all over the world. And Senator Bernie Sanders says many of those good ideas come from countries like Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Norway and Germany, where social democratic governments have done a lot of good. You know how much the cost of health care is? That's right, it's zero. You know how much it costs to send your kids to college? Zero. Do you know what their rate of childhood poverty is compared to the United States? It is much lower. 
Sanders says those European social democracies also have pay equity for women, government-supported child care programs, and strong infrastructure investment. All things he wants to bring to the U.S., but they do come at a cost. Yes, the wealthiest people in those countries and their largest corporations pay more in taxes. I think that we can learn something from those countries. Sanders said a progressive political ideas is really catching on. And as a result, he's now attracting large crowds all across the country. Are you surprised by this? The short answer is yes. <laughs> Sanders says it shows how desperate the American people really are for meaningful governmental change. I know the message would resonate. It is resonating, in fact, faster than I thought. Welcome back to Iowa. Thank you very much. He knows he's a liberal long shot in a field filled with rivals, raising multiple millions thanks to the Supreme Court Citizens United ruling. You know how we're raising money? By 280,000 people making individual contributions of average 35 bucks. For the record, Bernie Sanders does not have a super PAC. The politically charged day in Cedar Rapids started with a handful of public parties to kick off a swing through the state known as first in the nation. The real energy, though, could be found outside the main event. Grassroots at its absolute beginning. People on the street chanting for a candidate they believe in. It resembled a scene from the West Side Story. Two groups versus duke it out on First Avenue. What's the strategy to winning this turf war with the <laughs> people? You know what, we're just going to keep cheering our hearts out. We're so excited to be here for Hillary and we're just going to keep it up as long as uh, hydration lasts. In a state where grassroots campaigning is key, it's chants and decibels, not dollars and votes that matter here. It's huge. I mean, this is the Iowa caucus and there's nothing like it. There's nothing as exciting as the Iowa caucuses. While the Hall of Fame dinner brought in more than 1,000 people for a fancy outing inside, these volunteers and campaign staffers are happy battling the heat and humidity outside. I want to be out here with the people because I am the people. We are America. We are America. Woo! The former Secretary of State told me she's not surprised the investigation into her private email server has turned into a political fight. This is not the first time I've been uh, the target of some of these outlandish uh, claims and attacks. Hillary Clinton insists her emails were not classified at the time. But it's really simple. I did not send or receive classified information on my email. Clinton also says she felt bad after the latest Quinnipiac poll that showed more than half of Iowans say she's not trustworthy and doesn't care about their needs. What can you say to reassure voters that you are trustworthy and someone they can trust to lead the country. Reading that does not uh, make me feel good, I can tell you that, because um, I represented New Yorkers for two terms uh, in the Senate. I represented our country, and people saw that I would stand up and fight for them, that I cared about them, that I would never quit on them. The reason she never quits, her mother, who was abandoned and mistreated as a child. She was always telling me it's not what happens to you in life, it's what you do with what happens to you in life. So get back out there. Which is why Clinton is back out here, smiling and full of energy seven years after losing the caucuses. That and wanting to build a better future for her new granddaughter. I don't just want the best for Charlotte, I want the best for every child. She wants early childhood education, more affordable college and help with student loans. Clinton defends the Affordable Care Act and is now on a new mission. What have you learned here in Iowa that you had not or could not have found out anywhere else? I heard about substance abuse, particularly the, uh, the meth and pills problem here in Iowa. I heard about untreated uh, mental health problems. It just sparked a really big concern, and so I spent a lot of time looking like, what are we going to do? What she's going to do now is build a strong organization in the state and try to earn every vote. Her next stop back? Are you coming to the Iowa State Fair? I think we are. We'll be there, Matt. We'll be there. We, we have to work out the schedule, but you bet I wouldn't miss it. Cynthia Fodor, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's News Leader. Joining me in the questioning tonight are CBS News Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes, anchor Kevin Cooney of our CBS Des Moines affiliate KCCI, and political columnist Kathy Abradovich of the Des Moines Register. Candidates, we've already um, heard your answers on what you would do with Syrian refugees. 
but a crucial part of the immigration debate here at home is control of our own borders. Republicans say the borders, securing borders is a top priority. Democrats say they want to plan for comprehensive immigration reform. So, Governor O'Malley, are you willing to compromise on this particular issue to focus on border security first in favor of keeping the country safer? Well, Mr. Cooney, we've actually been focusing on border security to the exclusion of talking about comprehensive immigration reform. You're watching KCCI 8 News. Right now at 5, rising rivers, flooded roads, a whole lot of closures, and even some cleanup. It's been a busy day across central Iowa. We have you covered tonight. Our teammate coverage begins with Steve Carlin live. Steve? <laughs> well, Stacey, uh, we've got a lot coming up for you tonight. I'm here at uh, 63rd, which is also Iowa Highway 28. And uh, the bridge here that spans 63rd, there is a monitoring station for the Raccoon River on this bridge. The uh, stage at this river right now of this river right now at this particular point is 36.76 feet now flood stage here is 36 feet so it is rising and it is a slow rise and uh, businesses and neighbors are reacting to this flooding and we'll hear from them coming up plus we do have a live interview coming up with West Des Moines City Manager Tom Haddon he's just been filling me in on a whole bunch of stuff but first we need to go to KCCI's Rose Heafy she has the latest from in inside the Polk County Emergency Management Headquarters. Rose? Yes, I'm here at the Operations Center for Emergency Management for Polk County. Joining me right now is the director, A.J. Mum. You've been out there looking at seeing what the crews are doing. What can you tell us is going on right now? Well, right now we're sort of making that transition from the flash flooding that we saw most of the morning into the early afternoon into prepping for the river flood, which the, the raccoon and um, you know we're expecting that crest uh, tomorrow afternoon. But there's a lot of work that's being done right now, especially in West Des Moines and Des Moines, to uh, make sure that that flood water stays as much in the uh, in the levee system as possible. And as we continue in the next couple of days, what should people know about so that they make sure everything is safe? Well, we always say three things. Uh, number one is to have a plan. So if that plan uh, is for your pets and your kids and, and others in it, if that's a cell phone, make sure your cell phone's charged. Those things, we, we recommend that that's being done all the time. And then most importantly, stay informed, whether it's uh, the broadcast media, uh, local apps, uh, NOAA weather radio, a lot of ways to stay informed. So uh, those are the three things we ask people to do. All right, absolutely, AJ. Well, thank you so much for the update. Now, Stacy is back in the studio. Stacy, what can you tell us? Okay, Rose, thanks. One area of the city of Des Moines is watching very closely is Fleur Drive. That road was closed earlier this afternoon. The river levels there are expected to crest about two feet below record levels. KCCI's Kim St. Ange has been watching the waters at Fleur. Kim, what's the latest there? Stacy, water from the rising Raccoon River right behind me has already spilled onto Floor Drive, covering parts of uh, both the north and southbound lanes here. That has forced Floor Drive to close from MLK to Bell. Just to give you an idea of the levels here, the current level is just under 18, so that's actually gone up in just the last couple of hours or so. The flood stage is 12. The uh, River here at Floor Drive, the raccoon is expected to crest at around 23 feet. That's expected to happen around 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So someone who's been watching that very closely and really all day is Bruce Braun with the Des Moines Public Works. So first of all, let's just talk about the latest with Floor Drive. Okay, right now we closed Floor Drive down at about noon today because, as you can see, water coming out of the intakes there made it unsafe for the public to use. So uh, during that time, we've also been putting in... Uh, closures in our levees so that water couldn't get through where the roadways were. Uh, for instance, at George Flake Parkway, just down the road here, we put in a uh, uh, aluminum closure that the uh, Des Moines Water Works worked with us to get in, and that was put in at about noon also. So we've got this buttoned up well so that the water that does come across from the raccoon into a uh, floor does not spread over to the areas that have uh, businesses and residents. What are some of the maybe bigger areas of concern around Des Moines right now? Well, the biggest area right now is the uh, Fleur Drive area. We are also looking at 63rd Street and Railroad. Uh, if the river levels get to where they're predicting, we may have to put in a levee closure across 63rd just south of Railroad. So 
We'll determine that based on our forecast that we get later on this evening. And uh, just to mention, Bruce was telling me a few minutes ago actually that uh, this area of floor drive could have to remain closed for the next several days. I think you said you were hoping to get it open by maybe Sunday or Monday. Right. Okay. But All right. Well, we want to thank you, Bruce. And I do want to mention real quickly, I have some new information for you that involves Waterworks Park and how flooding is affecting that area. I'll bring you that in just a little bit when uh, you check back in with us. Stacy. Okay, Kim, thank you so much. Now, Fleur Drive is a main north-south artery in and out of downtown Des Moines, and with that stretch of road closed, it is causing some traffic backups in other areas. This is a live picture right now. This is actually 7th Street and Indianola Road. Traffic is so busy. We've seen an officer in that intersection trying to direct traffic for the folks who are leaving downtown. Um, drivers also saw a big mess at 63rd and Grand earlier this morning. Business owners and residents were dealing with a whole lot of water. Let's check back in with Steve who's just south of that intersection. He's at uh, 63rd and the river. That's right, Stacy. Just about a mile south of there, and we were up there at 63rd and Grand earlier today. The roads, both Grand Avenue and 63rd Street, they are open now. But as you said, it was a big mess earlier today, and KCCI's Stephanie Nolte has that story. That's cool. All of this water, the Walnut Creek left on Grand Avenue and 62nd Street, may look cool to some, but it's causing a headache for many others. This is just wild to see. I can't believe it. Pizza Hut had over an inch of water on their floors this morning. From what I can see, there's going to be tile damage probably. Probably freeze our freezers, coolers, obviously some food damage. Walnut Creek flooded cars near 63rd and Grand, but it didn't spill over the floodgates a block away at Ashworth. I talked with Public Works yet again, and we believe that it's already peaked and it should be coming down. Des Moines City Manager Scott Sanders had to come out here to see the flooding for himself. It was clear it was going to be an interesting day with the amount of rain that we got. And here in Clive near Greenbelt Park, the Walnut Creek completely flooded this church parking lot. Swamping a number of lease return vehicles, Willis Auto had parked here. These apartments off 75th and University in Clive, underwater, as well as University Photo. We we're just totally unexpected that, so our first order of business is to get the everything unplugged and uh, off the ground. As fast as we get it dry, it's coming back in. He says they'll be here quite a while, cleaning up the damage from six inches of water that got inside. Stephanie Nolte, KCCI 8 News, Iowa's news leader. Back out here at 63rd Street at the Raccoon River Bridge, I'm joined now by West Des Moines City Manager Tom Haddon. And Tom, you've had a very busy day. Why don't you tell us the most important thing that you can tell people right now? Well, uh, well, we're, we've done a good job preparing. We've talked to our businesses and any residents are impacted. But I will say, if there's road closures, of course, you've heard this over and over. It's uh, it's very serious to be driving in water. You could it doesn't take much to float a vehicle, and it's so please obey those. And there are going to be some road closures. You know we're hoping that we don't have to close uh, Highway 28 or 63rd later tonight, but we're keeping an eye on it. We'll be prepared to do so. Uh, so we look right up here at Railroad Avenue and the railroad crossing there. You already have heavy equipment there, and they're ready right. to move, aren't right. they? Right. We got the dirt ready, and we'll we'll join those levees together if necessary. The uh, the peak is still supposed to go a half foot over the 2008 record. Maybe that it, it was a, it was higher than that, so maybe it'll come down. And I think it's not going to hit till tomorrow afternoon, so it gives us time to prepare. Okay. And you were saying if we did not have the levee system in place following the flood of '93, Valley Junction would be in big, big trouble. Well, if, if it, when it hits a peak, yeah, there could, there could be a four or five feet of water, and a whole section of Valley Junction would be under that much water. Yes. Okay, Tom Haddon, West Des Moines City Manager. So we have learn from the flood of 93. Now we're going to be, we're going to continue to be out here tonight along 63rd and in other parts of Des Moines Live. But for now, let's go back to the studio and Stacy. All right, Steve, thank you. To the west, officials are watching river levels in Dallas County. KCCI Cynthia Fodor shows us flooding west of there on Highway 69 between Adele and DeSoto. Here along Highway 169, I'm told crews worked frantically this morning to try to pull this heavy equipment up to dry land, but the water was coming up way too fast. Oh, I would say it's raised three feet. So 
2006 this morning. Dave Moore of DeSoto delivers concrete to this bridge replacement project and showed us pictures he took as the river came out of its banks. You can see a completely devoured major construction equipment that was setting on land here last night. I could see the sandbar underneath that bridge last night when I came home and it, it rose pretty quick. How would you describe the rain last night you were hearing? Heavy heavy for a long time. Dallas County saw the heaviest downpour in the state, more than seven inches, causing the North Raccoon River to swallow up one huge crane, a couple of bulldozers, and several metal storage containers. The DOT says United Construction out of Johnston had been working here. Well, I don't know, but I'm guessing over $100,000. Every piece of equipment out here is probably over $100,000. A DOT spokesperson tells me they won't know until these floodwaters recede exactly how it will impact this construction project. Project here in Dallas County, Cynthia Fodor, KCCIA News, Iowa's News Leader. And now we check in with Chief Meteorologist John McLaughlin. We had a wild weather day yesterday. Clearly, we do not need any more rain. So, what do the next few hours look like for us, John? Well, certainly there will be some precipitation, mainly sliding on in from the western counties and down into central Iowa, mainly southern Iowa, though, for the risk of some of the, that heavier rainfall. Outdoors right now, 77 degrees. Winds out of the east-northeast. The dew point's down a little bit, 67 from what we had earlier. And as we head through the next several hours, temperatures will continue to be in the 70s. Those scattered thunderstorms possible on into the evening hours and through about midday tomorrow. Now, this is an impressive graph because it really shows what happened last night. Look at the rainfall totals from you get into Carroll and especially Greene County. So kind of up toward the uh, start of the Raccoon River system, down through Panora, south side of the metro, down through Knoxville, Ottumwa, Centerville. So this is going to take a lot of time to deal with. We have uh, millions of cubic feet of water to deal with here, certainly. And you can see a general amount of anywhere from six to eight inches, a few spots on the radar, even higher than that. Now, our school net sites keep track of some of this as well. Very impressive totals. When we get very heavy, in fact, torrential rainfall, these sites under report by 10 to 20 percent. So you can add that to these. But look at that, anywhere three to five inches across some of our school net sites in western and southern Iowa. Again, a look at the big picture out to the west. There's thunderstorms that are moving more to the east southeast. So if you just kind of follow that trajectory, most of those are going to skim down across areas of southern Iowa. So we'll watch throughout the evening hours. But Right now, the threat for the torrential kind of rains we saw last night, uh, very low. In fact, most of southern Iowa right now dry, the exception the far southwest, a few storms still there. That boundary that caused us all the trouble last night has sunk back down south into areas of northern Missouri. Temperature-wise, we're in the 70s. Cloud cover across the region keeping us from seeing those temperatures get much above about 75, 76 degrees. So here's the frontal system which pushed south last night. It'll actually lift back north just a little bit tomorrow and we'll see those showers and thunderstorms along it and then we'll dry things out a little bit for late Friday and through the first part of Saturday. So for tonight, showers across about the southern third to half of the state. Most of the heavier rain confined to about the last one to two rows of Iowa counties. And then more hit and miss during the afternoon tomorrow. Winds will be northerly and that will keep the moisture from being quite as high as what we saw during the night last night. So forecast for tonight, cloudy thunderstorms developing overnight, especially southern Iowa, 66 degrees then through the day tomorrow. Temperatures in the upper 70s, a few showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon. Heading on into Saturday, a dry day. Storm chances move back in late Sunday and on into the very early morning hours of Monday. Then it looks like for the most part a dry week with just very slim chances for rain. Thank you, John. Supreme Court decision, the historic ruling on Obamacare handed down today from the highest court in the land. And we continue to watch river levels and monitor road closures across central Iowa. Steve Carlin is live along the Raccoon River tonight. He'll have an update for us next. Welcome back to KCCI 8 News. Steve Carlin live along 63rd Street in West Des Moines at the uh, 63rd Street Bridge over the Raccoon River. We've been watching this river go up as we've been here. It's kind of a slow rise in the river, but we do want to show you some amazing video that came into the newsroom today. Just unbelievable stuff. Drones capturing the rising rivers across central Iowa. This is a look at Walnut Creek near 63rd and Grand. Now, 63rd Street was
was closed for a time and those floodgates were down because there was water over the road. But uh, the video just unbelievable and other videos shot today before the river started to go down. So some really incredible images for us to look at there from drones. Now downstream on the Raccoon River, they are watching the river rise at Floor Drive and it's creating some traffic problems. That's where we check in with KCCI's Kim St. Ange. She's there live. Steve, I'm here near George Flag Parkway and Floor Drive, and this is where crews spent quite a bit of time earlier this afternoon putting up that 14-foot aluminum gate closure along with those sandbags to prevent the water from the Raccoon River from spilling over there onto George Flag Parkway. Right now, the water level is sitting at just under 18 feet. Flood stage is 12. It's expected to crest at 23 feet by uh, later on tomorrow around 1 o'clock, so that has already started to spill onto floor. That's why it is closed now from ML K to Bell. Well, this flooding is also affecting Waterworks Park. The crews there have put up several gates to block the water from spilling out into uh, other areas. We're told that that area could be closed for another week or so, waiting for that water to recede back. Uh, I do want to mention that crews have also been working very hard to protect the water treatment plant there in Waterworks Park. We caught up with the CEO of Waterworks Park, Bill Stowe, and here's what he had to say about that. We're confident that we're going to be able to protect our critical facilities here. People have other things to worry about right now than whether they're going to be able to turn on the tap and get water. That will happen. More thing about Floor Drive, we were just told minutes ago from someone with the Des Moines Public Works that this area, this stretch again from Bell to MLK on floor could be closed uh, either through Sunday or Monday. As far as that River Banks bash that was scheduled for Waterworks Park here on Saturday, that has since been moved. They're hoping not to cancel, but are still trying to figure out where they're going to move that. Of course, we're going to have that information for you as soon as possible and bring that to you. We want to go ahead and send it back to Steve. All right, KCCI's Kim St. Ange live along Fleur Drive. We have other news tonight to tell you about. High drama at the Supreme Court as justices rule on the legality of tax subsidies in the Affordable Care Act. With Chief Justice John Roberts leading the way, the court today in a 6-3 to three ruling upheld the subsidies that help millions of Americans buy health insurance. Now those who filed the challenge said the way the law was written, the tax credits should only go to people who live in the states that had set up their own health insurance marketplaces. The rule of law is all about black words on a white piece of paper. It's what the actual language says. That's the only thing as an American you can count on is actual law. The Supreme Court and various justices have said you can't look at four words out of context, that we have a responsibility to look at the law as a whole. In the majority opinion, Chief Justice John Roberts writes, quote, Congress passed the Affordable Care Act to improve health insurance markets, not to destroy them. Justice Antonin Scalia quipped, we should start calling this SCOTUS care. Republicans vow to continue the fight to repeal and replace the law in Congress. In South Carolina, mourners are paying their respects to those murdered during Bible study at Emanuel AME Church last week. President Obama will travel to Charleston tomorrow to eulogize one of the victims. State Senator Clementa Pinckney, Marley Hall has the story. Through tears, mourners said goodbye to Ethel Lance. She was a victim of hate, and she can be a symbol for love. That's what she was in life. Not far away, another funeral service for 45-year-old Sharonda Coleman Singleton. Anytime we have that type of angel in our midst, then uh, we have to be happy. The women were among nine people killed during Bible study at the historical black church last Wednesday. There will be seven more sad goodbyes in the next week, and some people here in the Charleston area will pay their respects at more than one. The body of State Senator Clemente Pinckney was returned to his hometown church in Ridgeland for the last time. Later this evening, a second viewing for Pinckney will take place at Emanuel AME Church. Marley Hall, CBS News, Charleston, South Carolina. President Obama will eulogize State Senator Pinckney tomorrow in South Carolina. And as we continue to watch and monitor the floodwaters, a lot of you are sending us your photos. Take a look at this from Matt in Waukee. Very full rain gauge, almost eight inches there. And here's an aerial shot sent to us from Justin. This was taken over 63rd and Grand. No swimming in the pool today, apparently, in uh, Guthrie Center.
Well, there's a lot of water in the pool, and it's not swimming pool water necessarily. Send us your photos right now. Make sure to upload them to our website, kcci.com. Okay, Big Brother fans, a lot of you are wondering about this last night. KCCI plans to rebroadcast Wednesday's episode of Big Brother tomorrow morning at 1.37 a.m. Make sure to set your DVR. This will not appear in the television listing, so you will have to do a manual recording of that episode. There's still time to check out the 33rd annual Blood Donor Day. KCCI viewers ask to donate units of blood to help save lives. Our Valley West location has been running since 11 o'clock this morning. It's open until 7 o'clock tonight. LifeServe Blood Center volunteers are there to get you signed up and help you donate. Last year we had more than 750 donors. We're looking to match that or better yet top that. One donor tells KCCI he's attended our drive for more than 24 years. I always feel better after I donate, not just uh, because it's a good thing to do, Just phys I just physically feel better. And if you donate, you do receive a free t-shirt and a snack. And again, there's just under two hours left to check out that blood drive at Valley West Mall. We'll be right back. Steve Carlin back live along 63rd Street and on the West Des Moines side. The Raccoon River is right there and it's rising slowly. But the thing that we're really watching is if you see that heavy equipment down there, they are getting ready to extend the levee here just south of Railroad Avenue across 20, Highway 28, uh, 63rd Street, if necessary. They have the equipment in place if the water does come up that high that it could threaten the road. So. The Raccoon River still rising. We are watching this very closely. We've been talking with everybody who can give us the latest information, and we'll continue to have that for you coming up at 6. Let's go back to Stacy and meteorologist John McLaughlin in the studio. All right, Steve, and we don't need any more rain. Yeah, scattered showers, mainly southern Iowa, for any heavier rain tonight. CBS Evening News is next. We'll be back at 6.